Dr. Dyer, thanks for joining us on Health Connection. We're going to make the connection or lack thereof between salt and high blood pressure. And so if we're going to talk about high blood pressure, let's get a definition out of the way. What is high blood pressure? What's going on? Well, interesting question. Uh, high blood pressure is the pressure that is exerted with each heartbeat when the blood that leaves the heart into the big vessels that it exerts against the walls of those blood vessels. Okay. And that's what we measure as blood pressure. What causes it to be high? To this date, we don't know the underlying reason as to why a particular person develops high blood pressure. Such as if you take two people of the same age, same sex, same height and weight, one may have blood pressure, the other may not. We know there are certain conditions that will put you at a high risk of developing it, but the true underlying nature and reason for it is still currently under investigation. Are there symptoms to high blood pressure? High blood pressure is known as a silent killer. And the reason it got its name is because quite often it does not, the patients do not have any symptoms. And it's not uncommon that they first come to the physician when they're experiencing problems related to un unknown or untreated high blood pressure over time. What happens to, you say you talk about untreated over time, what happens to people who have high blood pressure either don't know it or don't treat it? Well, it's a very important condition. And if someone has high blood pressure that is not known or that is, not, that is undetected, over time they develop problems with important organs in the body, such as the heart, the brain, the kidneys, or the eyes. And they may present or come to the doctor with complaints related to these organs. If you do have a diagnosis of high blood pressure, you found it, how do you treat it? Well, we typically take a two-pronged approach. Sometimes it's done in exclusion or simultaneously in parallel. The way we approach it is one is lifestyle and the other is medica medical therapy. And those are the broad aspects of it. And depending on the particular patient, we start measures either emphasizing on the lifestyle or persist with medication initially and then see how they respond. Fairly recently, the Centers for Disease Control came out with news about salt, and some are saying that the, that the news that they released was that salt and reducing salt in the diet doesn't have that great a beneficial impact on blood pressure. What does the study actually say? Interesting question, and um, I'm going to express uh, part of my viewpoint and tell you why. Okay. And it was an Institute of Medicine report that was put together reviewing currently available scientific information as to the effects of salt on blood pressure and to see if actually a range of salt intake has any health benefits over time. So the report was based on information that is already available and it was not a scientific study that was evaluated with patients over time. And reviewing that report, what it says is that lower salt intake did not have health benefits over time. But that is based on information available in the past, and that information is not complete to this date. They haven't evaluated patients at different levels of salt intake and seen how they respond in terms of health benefits, say, over a 10 or 20 year period. So my take on that is that the information is not complete, so the conclusion may not be completely accurate. So one thing that we know is the lower the salt intake, the better, but where that number is, is still unclear. Well, with respect to that then, so what is your advice to patients that have high blood pressure and heart disease concerning their salt intake? Well, I still go by the current uh, Heart Association, our professional organization recommendations, wherein I limit, I recommend that we, I tell the patients that if you have already coexistent heart disease, I aim for somewhere in the, sol in the range of about 2,000 grams per day of salt intake. And I achieve this by first going over 
their diets, what they eat for breakfast, what they take for lunch, what they have for dinner, and see where their predominant salt intake is coming into the diets, and go over it and see how I can help modify that. What about the news that we've heard that people with high blood pressure actually have a craving for salt? Right. This was based on a small report that came out of uh, University of Brazil, Sao Paulo, when they studied a small group of patients. They took patients who have high blood pressure and another group who have normal blood pressure, and they gave them bread which was salted with, uh, dusted with salt. And what they noticed was people who have high blood pressure had a higher craving for those foods compared to ones who didn't have high blood pressure. Is it because they're, they're genetically made up such that they have an increased uh, sensitivity or taste for salt? And, or is it something that they developed over time because of their food habits pre-existing to that time? It is still unclear. It's a very small group and I believe that we need more information and it is uh, uh, currently in the process of being more scientifically evaluated. Let's talk about children for a minute. Can children sure. have high blood pressure and if so, how does it affect them short term and long term? Sure. It is a very important uh, health problem. With increased obesity, patients, uh, their children can develop high blood pressure. If they develop blood pressure at a very young age, we start looking for other identifiable reasons, such as if they have problems in their blood vessels, any kidney problems, or if they have other coexistent conditions that need to be detected. However, we know that there are more and more children getting high blood pressure at a younger age and it is probably related to the high, uh, to the obesity. And the problems over time is they do, they, if they have undetected or high blood pressure, it does tend to lead them, uh, put them at a higher risk of developing heart problems, strokes, and after effects in the kidneys or even uh, vision problems over time. Mm -hmm. For people who do have high blood pressure, other than medication, what are the most effective steps they can take in lowering their blood pressure? Sure. Very important, interesting, and important question to answer. Uh, the main broad category of approaching this is lifestyle modification. What I mean by that is dietary changes, physical activity, and limit any effects of other lifestyle habits that may be inducing high blood pressure. In the first instance, like we've uh, talked about, is if they're taking a very high salt in their diet to limit that. If they have, if they have, are consuming excess amount of alcohol, once again to stop or decrease that. If they're smoking, to limit smoking. And the most important for overall health benefits, including high blood pressure, is physical activity. Achieving about 150 minutes per week of aerobic exercise and once again to decrease the level of uh, psychological stress if they're experiencing will all contribute to limiting and decreasing their, uh, their risk of uh, worsening the blood pressure and actually help improving it just without any medication sometimes. Very well. Doctor, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it very much and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be part of this program.